Hello and welcome to the World of Tanks Bootcamp, a complete guide to start playing World of Tanks for new players. Today, we will dive into how to best equip your tank, looking in depth at all the equipment types, including what is each equipment piece good for and when to equip it. Then we will look back at the consumables you already know and love and widen your knowledge about them while giving you a few tips and tricks along the way. Directives will be the next topic. They may be new to us, but you will find out all you need to know about them in this video. So let's start! As we already know from previous episodes, mounting equipment improves the effectiveness of the tank in battle. Unlike consumables and shells, equipment is a one-time investment. However, it comes at a relatively high cost depending on the tank tier and the class of the equipment. There is the option to demount and move the equipment if necessary. We can divide equipment into categories, classes and types. Let's start with the categories. There are four equipment categories sorting the equipment pieces according to the benefits they grant to a vehicle. The firepower category includes equipment that enhances the effectiveness of destroying enemy vehicles. Equipment in the survivability category increases the vehicle's resilience to damage. The mobility category has equipment that boosts the vehicle's ability to change position on the battlefield. And the scouting category includes equipment that enhances the effectiveness of the vehicle's concealment and ability to spot enemy vehicles. Some equipment pieces belong in multiple categories. For example, improved ventilation boosts crew skills and influences the overall performance of the vehicle. These categories begin to be important at Tier 6, where a special boost for the first equipment slot appears. Depending on the vehicle type, you can boost the equipment stats even more. Heavy tanks get a survivability boost, medium tanks get a mobility boost, light tanks get a scouting boost, and TDs and SPGs get a firepower boost. So if you include an equipment piece of that category in the first equipment slot, you will enhance the characteristics of that equipment piece. The amount difference is marked bright green next to the normal stats in the graphic. In the game, the boost is marked with an icon under the first equipment slot. If equipped with an equipment piece from the right category, the icon will highlight and the performance of the equipment is boosted. If equipped with an equipment piece from a different category, it will not be boosted. Talking of slots, the equipment slots open gradually as you progress through the tank tiers. You will unlock more equipment options along the way. The first equipment slot unlocks already by tier 2 tanks with 9 equipment options. Improved ventilation, boosts the skills of your crew, enhanced gun laying drive accelerates the aiming speed of your gun, improved hardening increases the survivability of your tank, additional grousers provide better movement in any terrain, turbocharger boosts the engine power and top speed, binocular telescope extends the view range of a stationary vehicle, Camouflage net provides better concealment of a stationary vehicle, coated optics extend view range, and low noise exhaust system makes the concealment even more effective. The second equipment slot opens at tier 3 and the third equipment slot unlocks at tier 5 together with more equipment options. Improved rotation mechanism adds to the speed and gun handling of a tank, improved aiming reduces the aiming circle size, gun rammer allows for a faster gun reload, Modified configuration accelerates repair speed and enhances module's durability, and spall liner increases the survivability of the tank and the crew, especially against HE shells. A very important equipment piece that gradually becomes available through tiers 5 to 8 is vertical stabilizer, which reduces the aiming circle dispersion. But it is mountable only on light, medium and heavy tanks. As we already know, on tier 6, the first equipment slot gets an additional bonus of a certain equipment category depending on the type of the vehicle. On tier 8, two new equipment options, Commander's Vision System, an improved radio set enhancing the spotting and concealment mechanics, will open only for light and medium tanks. Some of the equipment pieces might be unavailable for certain vehicles. A gun rammer is unavailable for automatic loaders except for very rare exceptions. Improved ventilation is unavailable for open-top vehicles, but Chetillon 155, 55 and 58. TDs and SPGs are generally unable to mount the vertical stabilizer. Commander's vision system and improved radio set are available only for light and medium tanks of tier 8 and higher. Improved aiming, additional grousers and improved hardening cannot be used by SPGs. Finally, 
The turbocharger, binocular telescope and additional grousers are not available for wheeled vehicles. The equipment is divided into three classes. The lower the equipment class, the higher the tank tiers that are using it and the higher the cost. Class 3 equipment is the cheapest, not exceeding 50,000 credits per piece and is mostly suitable for Tier 2 to Tier 4 vehicles. Class 2 equipment is more expensive. The cost can go up to 300,000 credits and it is usually intended for Tier 5 to Tier 7 vehicles. Class 1 equipment is usually suitable for vehicles from Tier 8 and up and the price can climb up to 600,000 credits per equipment piece. Talking about the cost of equipment, it may seem like a big investment, but it really pays off to install a good equipment combination on your vehicles, since the equipment has a big impact on their behavior and stats. The price of equipment can be a little overwhelming, but you can earn equipment by completing missions or different events. There is also a possibility to get equipment on sale during weekend sales, so don't forget to check out our portal so you won't miss them. Be careful! Always do your research about the equipment that is suitable for your vehicle before you mount it. The mounting costs 10 gold or a demounting kit by standard equipment, so choose wisely. So far, we've talked about standard equipment obtainable for credits, but there are two more types of equipment that are more valuable, more expensive and less common. Improved equipment is one of them. It is marked with purple arrows and provides a greater bonus to vehicle characteristics than standard equipment. The bonus might be up to one-third more than the standard equipment bonus. Improved equipment is available for bonds under the Special Equipment tab, or if you want to buy it in bundles and spare some bonds in the process, then head to the in-game bond shop. Demounting this type of equipment costs bonds too, so think wisely before mounting it. Bounty equipment is the third and final type of equipment, but it is quite rare. This type has the same base stats as standard equipment, but you can upgrade it for credits. After the upgrade, it is more effective than the boosted standard equipment, but less effective than the improved equipment. The mounting costs the same as the standard equipment, and it can be earned in certain events like Battle Pass. Improved and bounty equipment provide a static bonus no matter which slot they are in, but both grant a bonus superior to standard equipment even if the standard equipment benefits from the category slot bonus. Furthermore, not all equipment pieces are available in their improved and bounty form. For most things and occasions, if you can mount a gun rimmer, do so. The same goes for the vertical stabilizer. From there on, the choice is mostly yours. Heavy tanks usually profit from having the improved hardening for the first slot. Medium and light tanks do very well with coated optics. TDs usually profit from binocular telescope, improved rotation mechanism or improved aiming. SPGs get the most from the improved rotation mechanism, improved ventilation and or enhanced gun lane drive. All vehicles profit from an improved ventilation if it's available. All of these are recommendations, however, so feel free to experiment with different layouts. As well as equipment, we've touched on consumables in our previous episodes, but we've talked only about the use of three basic consumables, repair kit, first aid kit and fire extinguisher. But there is more to consumables than only those items, even though those are the most commonly used. They are called consumables because they can be used and consumed during battle, and if they are used, they must be bought again after the battle is over. It is helpful to check the outdoor supply option, so you don't have to manually do it every time. The slots for consumables unlock gradually from the second vehicle tier, and on tier 4 there are already three final slots available. The absence of full consumables on those tiers is balanced in the game accordingly. On tier 1, there are no consumable slots, so vehicles don't receive damage to their modules or crew members. Only their tracks can be damaged for a short amount of time. On tier 2, with one consumable slot unlocked, it is advised to equip a small repair kit. Tier 2 vehicles can receive damage to their modules, but their crew is still safe and cannot be injured. A fire will deal only low damage. Tier 3 vehicles have two consumable slots, and since the crew and the modules are both vulnerable, equip a first aid kit and a repair kit. A fire still deals only a low amount of damage. From Tier 4, all the slots are unlocked, so the choice is yours, but I would advise the repair kit, first aid kit and fire extinguisher, as we did in our previous episodes. Let's look at all consumable choices there are in-game. Consumables can generally be divided into standard and improved consumables according to their price and the bonuses they can give. Small repair kit repairs one chosen damaged module when activated by the respective button and costs 3000 credits. 
large repair kit costs 20,000 credits, but you'll get a 10% repair speed boost, plus it can repair all currently damaged modules. Small first aid kit costs 3,000 credits and heals one chosen injured crew member when activated by the respective button. Large first aid kit provides 15% passive resistance against injury to all crew members, lowers the stun duration of the crew and heals all currently injured crew members. The price is 20,000 credits. Manual fire extinguisher costs 3,000 credits, can extinguish a fire when activated by the respective button, and its effectivity solely depends on the reaction speed of the player. Automatic fire extinguisher is the improved variant for 20,000 credits, but provides passive reduction of the chance to catch fire by 10% and is activated automatically almost immediately after the vehicle catches fire. 100 octane gasoline costs 5,000 credits and increases engine power and tire traverse speed by 5%. It is available only for gasoline engines of non-Soviet and non-Chinese vehicles. The improved alternative is 105 octane gasoline for 20,000 credits. It has the same vehicle limitation and increases the engine power and traverse speed by 10%. Land lease oil and quality oil are Soviet and Chinese alternatives only available in the standard consumables version. They cost 5,000 credits and increase the engine power by 5%. No activation is needed for gasoline and oil consumables since their effect is passive. The last standard consumable is called Removed Speed Governor, worth 3000 credits. It is available for Soviet and Chinese vehicles only, and it is the only consumable that gives and takes at the same time. It is never consumed, just activated. By pressing the respective button, the engine power will be boosted by 10%, but the vehicle's engine suffers damage while activated. It can be deactivated again by pressing the same button. There is a risk of damaging the engine during battle and adding additional repair costs. The last improved consumable that has no standard alternative is Extra Combat Rations for 20,000 credits. They are different for every tank nation, usually in the form of food or drink. This consumable is passive, so it doesn't need to be activated. It adds a 10% training level to all crew members and it is popular with experienced players. The general rule of thumb is that on every vehicle you should use a repair and first aid kit. After this, the choice is yours. Do you want the safety that a fire extinguisher provides? Or do you prefer boosting your crew with extra combat rations? Keep in mind, a crew trained to firefight can more effectively skip the extinguisher in favor of something else. Turretless tanks and some heavy tank drivers prefer to use a combination of small and large repair kits simultaneously to be less prone to immobilization. Since SPGs rarely participate in direct combat and do not get set on fire often, improved combat rations over an extinguisher are recommended. Other choices of consumables, for example gasoline on artillery, are rare, but do happen. It is up to you to experiment and find your favorite loadout. Directives are special one-time use bonuses, which can be mounted on Tier 5 to Tier 10 vehicles before combat and increase the efficiency of mounted equipment and crew skills or perks. You can mount the directive into a designated slot next to consumables. There are two types of directives. Directives for equipment increase the effect of mounted equipment and will work only if paired with corresponding equipment. You can purchase them for bonds or earn them through missions and events. The equipment directives include Vent Purge, which improves all crew skills with improved ventilation, Orderly Ammo Rack, which reduces gun reload time with gun rammer, Stabilizer Greasing, which reduces vertical dispersion with vertical stabilizer, Aim Tuning, which increases aiming speed with enhanced gun laying drive, Optical Calibration, which increases view range with coded optics, and Pre-Battle Maintenance, which increases a module's repair speed with modified configuration. Directives for crew improve the trained skill or perk of crew members. If the skill or perk is not fully trained, the directive boosts the effect to 100%. If a skill or perk is already fully trained, the directive adds an additional bonus on top. Crew directives can be purchased for credits or earned through missions and events. The crew directives include Natural cover with the concealment skill, Experienced firefighters with the firefighting skill, Increased focus with the sixth sense perk, Focus on target with the designated target perk, Steady Hand with the Snapshot skill, Combat Course with the Clutch Breaking skill, Gearbox Intricacy with the Smooth Ride skill, Shell Organizer with the Safe Stowage perk, and Duty Comes First with the Call for Vengeance perk. For newer players, the crew directives can be a very efficient way to operate. 
It is highly recommended to use an increased focus directive if the sixth sense perk has not been fully trained yet. If that is not the case, then for light and medium tanks the natural cover to boost camouflage is highly advisable. More experienced players will use either experienced firefighters to make up for an inexperienced firefighting crew while using combat rations, or choose to boost reload with orderly ammo rack, or overall crew performance with the vent perch. Yet again, all of this is to be taken as advice, and after experimenting around, the choice is completely yours. Now you know a lot of beginner-friendly tips and tricks that can help you to orient yourself better in World of Tanks. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable, and if you or your friend want to start playing, be sure to use our invite code TANKBOOTCAMP to get 7 days of premium time to help you progress faster, 250,000 credits to give you a head start in the game, 2D skin moon viewing to get dressed according to the latest fashion trends, and a tier 5 premium tank Excelsior with a fully trained crew and one garage slot. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you won't miss our next episodes. Check out our portal for info about promotions and events, and also our other videos and streams on our channel. See you next time, and good luck on the battlefield, commanders!